All right, guys, welcome back to part two of our epic journey. 1,100 miles, seven states, an old rusty Jeep. Got my new co-pilot. Hello. Let's check this thing out. All right, guys, so this is day two. We just got up. We're still at the hotel here. I did notice last night at the gas station, this thing was running a little bit rough when we fired it up right after we filled it up. We ran it a little bit low. We got into the red. You've seen it. If you haven't seen it, it's in the last video. Go ahead and check that out. Um, so I don't know if it's that or if it's just whatever stuff starting to move through the system from not being driven very much. But uh, we're going to put the old Behrman's, the Italian treatment, as uh, Derek from Vice Grip Garage calls it, the Italiano treatment. Put that in the tank. And then I'm going to actually take some carb cleaner, carbon intake cleaner, and spray it down the IAC valve into the throttle body. I'm not going to pull the IAC. Normally, I'd pull it out, clean it, clean the seat and all that. I'm just going to spray it, get it running, and spray it through the port while it's idling. So it'll suck that in and kind of clean that IAC valve system. And uh, just make sure, because sometimes those get carbon, get carbon and stuff. And it definitely could have been part of the IAC uh, system doing that. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick before we hit the road again. See if it cleans up. We got 580 more miles to go, I believe, right? Around 580 miles to go. I don't know if we're gonna do it all today or not, because we got some things we wanna check out. So you'll get to check them out along with us. And uh, let's do this. All right, so we went down to the Walmart. We got the uh, Berryman B12 Chem Tool. This stuff works really good. We're gonna put that in the fuel. Super Tech Carb Intake Cleaner. That'll be for the IAC valve. And we'll spray that in throttle body. I'll show you that in a minute. Get this baby opened up, lanyards broke. Set that there, hopefully not forget it. And uh, just dump her in. Hopefully this will take care of it. This stuff works wonders. Um, and something that hasn't been driven very much, definitely good. It was like $4. Seat bumps, definitely more money. And it works good too. Um, but for putting into the gas and not the oil, this is kind of my go-to. So that's all in. Hopefully uh, that'll help just clean the system out a little bit. Let's go under the hood and get this IAC cleaned. All right, we gotta get this intake hose off. Now let's go over real quick. Uh, if you didn't see the last video, this is my mom's, was my mom's Jeep, and uh, I'm gonna be the new caretaker of it. Uh, they've taken great care of it over the years. She bought it brand new, and um, Pennsylvania just basically started eating it, all the salt and snow on the road just started eating the metal on this jeep and they were having problems with the passing inspection every year without having to do work every single year uh florida i don't have inspections so i don't have to deal with that so i'm going to fix the frame if you look at the last video you'll see what i was talking about um fix that up better we got it good enough for the trip and then you know down the road we'll start on this body work stuff um that's non-structural but um we're just trying to make this trip down and like I said, check out the last video if you want some more information. And we're going to clean this up. So what we're going to do, if you look in here, here's your IAC valve. is right here. Bolts in. Normally, I would take this out, take the back part off, clean all that out, put it back together. But the IAC actually, right here, is where it controls the air and stuff like that. It, you know, the valves here, goes, the piston goes in and out, and here's the port. So you can see this is dirty in here. Look at that. So we're going to clean the throttle body. I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to spray in here, clean the IAC, and they could use it anyway and get this baby running tip-top shape so when we're idling in traffic or anything, we don't have no more stumbles or problems with the idle. Let me get it fired up. So we're going to spray a little in there. It probably it might die. There we go. Fire it back up. You want to do it while it's idling because that's when it's working. Come on, baby. There we go. Just kind of work at it. You're spraying it right in that port. You can already see it cleaning the throttle body there. If it's not idling, you don't want to open the valve because an IAC will kind of stop working. You want it idling because that's when that thing's moving around in there. Oh, she died. We're gonna fire it back up and do it again. All right, we gotta fire it back up. We'll just keep doing this. And we'll do this, I don't know, maybe a third of a can. Just make sure we get that nice and cycled through there and clean. And then, uh, after that, I'll clean out the throttle body, and that'll be it. Put it back together. All right, so now I'm just going to stick the straw in there, which I probably should have did in the beginning, kind of get it in that port a little bit better. It kind of still spills out into the throttle body, 
but I'm still doing this. And seems to be doing a little better with the stalling. It's definitely idling smoother. It sure sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah. So we'll do this a little bit more. Oh, there it is, dead again. I put too much in. So as soon as we're done, I'll show you. We'll clean the throttle body. I'll show you the throttle body real quick. Be back in a minute. All right, we got that all sprayed out. Now I just want to show you in this throttle body. You can see. Now it's kind of ran down there a little bit and was cleaning that, but you can see just how dirty the throttle body is here. I mean, that's filthy. So I'm gonna go in and spray this all out. Spray off the butterfly, spray off where it seals around the edges, get that all nice and clean, and this baby should be ready to go back together. Not a great area. All right, so we got that, look at that. That is clean. So we got the throttle body completely cleaned out and ready to go. You can see this is just some of the stuff on the rag that I wiped out. So I was just spraying it in, spraying it on the rag, going in and wiping that out real good. And now, woo, shining like a diamond. So put this back together, make sure it still starts, and then uh, hopefully hit the road. So just jam that on air tightened up and then uh, when we were up there and I did the air cleaner which at the house I didn't get to show you uh, that part really when I was cleaning it a little bit but when I took it off this hose cracked everything's just getting so brittle so we put put it on just a little bit of electrical tape kind of hold it on there and uh, seal it up so this is tight so now I'll fire it up see what happens It might take a minute just because we poured so much stuff down in there. It might take another minute. There we go. Rev her up a little. We got a lot of cleaner in there. Oh yeah. Running smooth. Hey, look at that. Light still works. It's awesome. 22 years. All right, close this up. I didn't check out all the way. I gotta go in there and check out. I just told them their systems were down. They couldn't give me a receipt. So I'm gonna go back in there now that we did this, check out, and then on the road. All right, first place we're gonna stop, right down the road from our hotel, is the barn from the Days of Thunder. Oh, Colt Trickle. So we just want to take a look at it. I don't know if you can go in it or anything, but at least want to see it. We're this close. Might as well check it out. The NASCAR Hall of Fame. We're in Mooresville, North Carolina. So NASCAR Hall of Fame. All that's here, but it's Sunday, so everything's closed. So we're not in seeing all that, but we can hopefully see this little barn. Looks kind of cool. It's from the movie, I guess. So uh, all right, let's head over there. All right, we're here. This is the barn from the movie Days of Thunder with Tom Cruise. He was Cold Trickle, pretty cool movie. And uh, like I said, in this area, there's tons of NASCAR stuff. I don't know if the, I don't think the inside was filmed in here, but the outside was. If you go back and look at the movie, I would do a flashback with something from the movie, but I'm not really sure I'll do that. So you have to look it up yourself. But this is the barn that they use for the outside shots with the race car right here. And uh, anyway, it looks a little run down. Let's check it out real quick. Still, it's an awesome looking barn though. It says private property here. So obviously they don't want you going in here. They got pallets, a bunch of stuff in there. But in the movie, I believe there was like a, a race car was right here. Anyway, you have to go back and look. I haven't seen the movie in a while, but I do remember this. And uh, that is pretty cool. So anyway, we can walk around the side real fast. So here you go. It's a better shot of it. Still got the silo. Man, that's cool. But we can't stay here too long because we got to hit the road. So come back over here. Hop in the old Jeep. And again, we're looking for a name for this. We're not sure. So leave it in the comments down there if uh, you can think of a name. It's got a Steelers theme. My daughter was saying Wally because he was yellow and kind of rusty because this thing, like I said, the frames are rusted. We're rusted here on the back, stuff like that. Um, smiley because, you know, my mom had smiley faces all over it, which does go with it. Sunshine, happiness, that kind of thing. Um, leave, the, leave it in the comments down there. Let me know what you think. Give me a good name for this. All right, you ready? Yep. 
Let's do it. All right, back on the freeway. Hey, we got 128 miles to our next uh, turn, so here we go. There we are, is our next state. Welcome to South Carolina, York County. Woo! We're getting there. Keep trucking. Got the Welcome Center coming out. Oh man, I do you want to stop there? No? Maybe. Yeah. I think we keep trucking. Oh, look at that. G-Wagon. Woo! Big money. All right. Continue the journey. Water Tower. Lightwood, South Carolina. Wherever that is. Making our way downtown. Hi! <laughs> Alright. Well, traffic. Yep. Oh boy. Yep, it looks like. I mean, at least we're moving. We're moving. It's just bumper to bumper for a long ways. Let me uh, flip you around. I don't know if you can see, but it goes all the way up that hill over there. We can try to zoom you in. You can see it just goes way up there. So, not that we are going fast, but it's definitely going to uh, increase our time of getting to where we need to be. But that's okay because we're having a good time, right? Yeah. So, it's been a good trip, so we're keep pushing along here. Well, there's a wreck there. Mustang few people involved looks like that side's backed up I don't know if this side's backed up just from rubber neckers or what but we're moving again that's all it counts all right, so we just pulled off for gas here at Murphy USA Walmart gas and uh, see if we can save a couple you know a couple cents on some fuel but uh, we're at a quarter tank we're gonna fill it up see what kind of MPGs we're getting uh, my wife's cord probably used barely any gas but uh, see what kind of mpg she's getting so um let's check it out all right so we just got done checking the fuel mileage in this thing checked it the miles that we went divided by the gallons came up with 19.72 miles per gallon that is the best yet that we have done so obviously cleaning that out with the carb cleaner and getting that iac cleaned and the throttle body cleaned out and putting the barrenmans in the tank something must have helped it because before that i think that we did 17 miles of the gallon the next tank was 17.95 18 miles of the gallon so we've increased quite a bit miles per gallon. Now, let's go over to my wife and see what she got in her car. So, I'm sure it's better, but all right, let's see. All right, we got 19.72 miles of the gallon of Jeep. What'd you get? 48.9. What? 48.9. I thought you said 48. 4.9 or 48.9? 48.9. Oh, boy. And it's turbo? It is turbo. Oh, boy. That's... It's definitely better than ours. All right, we need to find a little something to chew on around here and get back on the road. Um, there is something we're going to check out. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but you're going to get to see it. Actually, a couple things, but there's one thing right down the street here. Hopefully, we can get to it real easy. And then, I don't know, the next one I think is a couple hours down the road, but it'll only be a couple minutes for you, so relax. All right, let's do this. On a quick side note, my elbow, I don't know if you can see it, but it got smoked from hanging out the window. So, yeah, I'm going to put some block on. Oh, well, we decided to just grab uh, some deli meat here at Walmart. We're going to make some sandwiches at the car, but check this thing out. Oh, yeah. Right here in the parking lot, in the wild. Short box, square body. Clean, too. It's nice. I like the wheels. Automatic. Man, it's nice. You probably can't see that, but... Yeah, it's clean. All right, moving on. Check out this Walterboro Army Airfield Memorial Park. I don't know. We're here. Might as well check it out. Anderson Field. This airfield first in Colleton County. Dedicated in 1933. 60 acres. Some other stuff there. And Pause the video and read it if you want. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, the uh, Tuskegee Airmen. Oh, this is pretty cool. 
Check this out. That's pretty cool. Check out, check that. I mean, those, that is, that is a cool picture. Bunny. This monument is in honor of the famed Tuskegee Airmen, as well as the instructors and ground support. That is pretty cool. Check this out over here. That's a cool monument, actually. I want to see what that guy is over there. I can't quite see it from here. Oh, it's an old, like, beacon. Man, that is cool. It is huge. 1945, the Army deeded the Walterboro Army Airfield, previously known as Anderson Airfield, blah, 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 stuff. The beacon right there. Air guiding light was left as part of surplus in 19... 1996, World War II, buffs from out of state were caught making off with the load of military artifacts, including this beacon. Fortunately, they were stopped. Man, so somebody tried stealing it. Man, that's cool. That thing is pretty cool. All right, well, got to get on the road. It's a cool little stop. Little airport here in Walter, Bo Walter Burrow, South Carolina. So... We're going to get back on the road and make our way down to Georgia. The old Jeep's filled up. Our stomachs are filled up. And uh, we're ready to hit the road again. Well, she didn't want to get out. We swapped co-pilots here. Got my daughter with me now. And she did not want to get out and check out the memorial. Says it's too hot or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's boogie. Another water tower. I like seeing these old water towers. Still in Waterboro. Hey, plane taking off. Bye. Uh -huh. Downtown Waterboro left. We are going right. Gotta get back on the road. Back on the highway and another water tower. All right. Bonus. Two water towers in just a couple of miles. Not too shabby. City of Waterboro, South Carolina. Nice. out there. Crazy Joe Fireworks, get you some. South Carolina. Finally getting back on the interstate. It uh, rerouted us a little. I don't know what's going on on 95 here in South Carolina, but we have been drive 65, slow down to a stop, creep for a while, 20 miles an hour, drive 65, slow down to a stop like over and over and over. So finally, ways directed us out here on uh, Route 17. I don't know. And uh, we're getting back on 95, and there's still a lot of traffic. But we did bypass a ton. Thank goodness that it routed us around that, but looks like we're still going to be in it. See all this traffic as we're getting on, but the good news is, hey, another water tower. I like these water towers. What's it say? Hardyville? Can I just say Hardyville? Oh, mm -hmm. boy. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh boy, that is bad, bad, bad camera work. Anyway, that one's actually pretty cool. It's different than most of them. It just looks a lot different. Anyway, all right, back to traffic. Nothing exciting. Oh, that's cool, those trees down in the water. Like a perfect line. That's no, really neat. And then right up here, crossing the bridge. Boom. Welcome to Georgia. Nice. All right, we just crossed the Georgia line. That is our sixth state. One more state to go. Our home state, as of now, Florida. So we're getting there little by little. It's been a long trip. We've seen a lot of cool stuff. And uh, it's been a pretty cool journey. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, a little more driving left, that's for sure. We're still quite a ways from the house, but getting closer to Florida. So, hey, that feels better. What do you think? Been a good trip so far? Yep. 
That's it? That's all you got? Yeah. Yeah, that's all you got. All right, moving on. Well, we made another stop along the journey here. Found a pretty neat little thing. Got the Jeep right here. And that is America's smallest church. America's smallest church. Look at that thing. You can't compare the Jeep, but it's small. Let's go check it out. Yep, that's pretty small. Well, it'd be easy to clean the gutters, if, you know, if it had gutters. Can you go in here? Hello? Nope, nobody's in here. <laughs> wow, this is cool. It's an actual, it's a, it's an actual church. That is cool. Well, anybody want to do some preaching? This is pretty neat. Wow, look at the stained glass. All the way around, huh? That is cool. See the stained glass up in that little cubby hole up there. Bunch of papers on the wall. Somebody stopped by. Uh, 2006, 18, 24. Oh, little notes. That's pretty neat. Marsh family from Atlanta. June of 24. I mean, this is cool. It can fit quite a few people in here. And it is not air conditioned. But it is pretty hot in, pretty hot in here for sure. Man, this is cool. Some prayer requests. Matthew five sixteen. This is cool. Ten Commandments. Read them, remember them. Pause the video there if you don't know them. Amazing Grace. It's a great song. All right, let's check out the outside. And the bell looks like it actually worked. Let's try it. <laughs> Man, it's got, it sounds good. It's got a ring to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. May this bell ring out as praise to the Lord. January 1st, 1998. Pretty sweet. cool spot smell you're on camera we're both now i'm filming them filming me on camera perfect pretty sweet that's so cool all the stained glass Trash can over there, a little picnic table. Hang out on, under these trees and just kind of hang out. Have lunch, maybe. It's a cool spot. All right, we're pulling out of the parking lot for the uh, America's Smallest Church. Next stop, Bucky's in St. Augustine, I believe. Unless we see something pop up on the way, we want to check out. But that's 127 miles from here to St. Augustine, so... As far as I know, that's our next stop. Uh oh, look at that. Jeep. Jeep squad.
just pulling out of Bucky's. Got topped off with fuel. Got the old Bucky's bites. Milk chocolate with the peanut butter filled. The best ones out there. They are delicious. And uh, we got what, two hours, 20 minutes to the house. I think we're just gonna push it the rest of the way. It's about nine o'clock at night. We're all getting a little tired from all the traffic in South Carolina, but I think we're just keep pushing and make it all the way to the house. Whatever you do, do not park here. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, Jeep friend, right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it says Daytona. Daytona Beach. Right there in the grass. And we got a huge bug on the windshield. Ah, great. But we are getting closer, that's for sure. We're just blasting through the night. In the old Jeep. All right, guys, we are back. The old Jeep did good. 1,100 miles, seven states. Uh, it's dark. We're tired. It's 1130 at night. Um, thank goodness for cruise control. Works great in this thing. Uh, holding your foot on the gas the whole way would have been a long trip. Uh, we didn't break no sound barriers. Ran about 65 miles per hour the whole way down. Um, but, you know, we were trying to make a little vacation out of the journey down. Also, we seen some sights and water towers and yeah, I mean, you've seen all that. You rode along with us, uh, made little side trips and stuff like that. Not far off the highway, so we didn't lose a lot of time. But you might not get to those other areas of America again. I don't know, you know. So we want to see those things while we're driving by them. So it was pretty cool. Um, but I appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, all the things, the YouTube things. I hate saying it, but, you know, got to say it. So uh, thanks again. And you'll be seeing this Jeep more. And some of the upcoming videos, us doing the repairs on the frame, and uh, it needs to tune up, and just kind of going through it, getting it cleaned up, engine bay, the whole. I mean, you'll see, you'll see a lot of that on the YouTube. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in Jeep stuff, and of course a lot of the other projects. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.